Cannabis Saturday. It loves to take. Loves to take. Loves to take. Loves to take. It's not a society that loves to give. It's a society that loves to take. It's a society that says, what do you have for me? Not a society that says, what can I do for you? Back in the day, it was just understood that we give before we have expectation of getting. Um, I don't know if many of you ever worked jobs, but back in the day, we had to work two weeks before we even saw a check. <laughs> it was two weeks that you had to put in before they even compensated you. You guys would never go for that these days because you're so used to getting and not getting. So we're in an era that we have expectation, but we don't give for the expectation. I said yesterday that we have over 9 million people watching us weekly during the game, and it's probably going to exceed that tremendously this week. So therefore, you don't understand what you're getting. But what are you giving? Because your giving starts in the morning, the way you prepare, the way you wake up, the way you want it, and the desire, and the way you need it. What are you giving that you don't have uh, expectation of reciprocation? What are you giving? What are you giving? Not many of us will put money into a vending machine and walk away from it. Because well, usually when we put money in the vending machine, we want something to come out because of what we put in. But what are you putting in? Straight up. When the last time you've been exhausted for practice? When the last time you just say, you know what, I ain't got but five plays, they gonna get every, everything I got. When the last time you say, you know, it ain't gonna be because of me. Me and Pretty Tony, Coach Ray, has the saying that ain't because of me. When I started this whole coaching journey at this level, I had several uh, interviews and I would go in those interviews overly prepared. I mean, overly prepared that I gave them the projection of the three to five year plan and told them about the recruits and told them about every darn thing they would even fathom, even the marketing aspect of the university. And I walked out with my head high every darn time. And I looked at Ray, cause he was in the car with me, waiting for me. And I said, ain't gonna be because of me. That means that if we don't get this opportunity, it's not gonna be because I didn't earn it. It's not gonna be because I wasn't prepared. It's not gonna be because I wasn't a guy. But I trust the God to get me in the right place at the right time for such a time as this, and I'm thankful. But it ain't gonna be because of me. I cannot wait till you have that attitude. On third and five, ain't gonna be because of me. On first and 10, ain't gonna be because of me. On special teams, Ain't gonna be because of me. We're gonna be dominant, and if we're not, it ain't gonna be because of me. That's the attitude I want you to have. Can Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes beat the Oregon Ducks this weekend? Why not? Oregon comes into this game at 3 0. They're also the number 10 ranked team in the country. But what makes the Oregon Ducks a 20 point favorite over the Colorado Buffaloes? Well, in their first game, they beat Portland State 81 to seven. Portland friggin' State. Basically, they beat the snot out of some school whose only win was 91 to nothing against some school you never heard of. Then the Oregon Ducks beat Texas Tech, whose only win was against Tarleton State. Yes, I said Tarleton State. Then the Oregon Ducks pummeled Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, that's who Oregon beat in their third game. The Hawaii team, whose only win was against that world-renowned team, Fordham University. <laughs> Seriously, how are the Oregon Ducks a 20-point favorite over Colorado, who's beaten TCU, Nebraska, and a tough CSU team? I'm not a betting man, but the Colorado Buffaloes being a 21-point underdog is a complete sham. If I was a betting man, I'd be logging on to FanDuel and taking those points. You may be asking yourself, why? Why would you do that, Barry? Actually, the question is, why not? Last year, TCU wasn't supposed to go to the national championship, but they did. Why can't Colorado? You got your door. Why can't Colorado? You got Edwards. Why can't Colorado? You got Prime. Why can't Colorado? You got Hunter. Why can't Colorado? You got Shiloh. Why can't Colorado? Emmanuel Acha, whose voice you just heard in that piece, was completely right. Why can't we expect 
that Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes could pull off an upset and beat the Oregon Ducks. After all, do you think that Shador Sanders is a lesser quarterback than Bo Nix? No, I don't think so. Shador Sanders is a, is a superstar in the making. Ladies and gentlemen, look at him look away and then throw to a different receiver and come back and throw to a different receiver. Look at him go through his progressions. Look at his athleticism and speed. Look at his arm strength. This brother is special. And when you consider his skill set, that's one thing. But when you consider the fact that this brother is primetime Deion Sanders' son, and you look at his poise, his leadership capability, how protective he is of his father. He was standing at midfield when his father shook hands with Coach Norville after the game because of what Coach Norville said about him, said about his father. I mean, the poise under pressure, the big moments, he doesn't shy away from it, he embraces it. He has star written all over him. He is that freaking special. You see, in my estimation, there's only one reason why Colorado is a 21 point dog to the Oregon Ducks. And that reason is a lot of people still don't believe. To believe requires an admission that too many aren't ready to make. That admission isn't about Deion Sanders. That admission is that for years, too many in the college football world have overlooked the talent at HBCUs. To admit that Colorado could potentially win in this type of a game makes people have to admit they've been wrong, that these kids can just not play, but they also can compete at a high level in college football. They don't want to admit that because if they do, the ceiling is busted. The floodgates are gonna open for HBCU kids to transfer, and guess who's gonna get those recruits? Coach Prime, that's you. This brother, what he has done to change the culture in that city is one thing, to change the face of college football. We haven't talked about Nick Saban and Kirby Smart and those boys, Brian Kelly or Chip Kelly or anybody else. We haven't talked about them that much, okay? Lincoln Riley and all, we haven't talked about them much. But we talked about prime time. He's been the story and they got their work cut out for them when they go against USC. Because the reigning Heisman Trophy winner is coming to town to go up against your dear Sanders. And I'm telling you right now, that's the match that we all have to see. We can't miss that. That's going to be must see TV. That is going to be a sensational, sensational situation to look at. But prime time. And I think about his greatness. I'm not just talking about what he's doing as a leader, as a recruiter as a leader of men, as a football mind, as a talent evaluator, the opportunities that he's opened up for coaches and players from HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, for those of you who don't know what that acronym stands for, is pivotal, it's big. Because seeing what he sees, there's only one. He's one of one. There's only one primetime Deion Sanders. But because of the talent that he's brought with him, everybody knows that the success, he isn't succeeding by himself. He doesn't fail to give his players credit. He doesn't fail to give his coaching staff credit. And if you're getting them from HBCUs and they're succeeding, it's going to put ample pressure on college programs and NFL franchises to recognize what HBCUs may indeed have to offer. That is culture changing. That is what Deion Sanders has pulled off. Every college bass, every college football program is going to ask now, where's my Deion Sanders? They won't admit it. But that's what they're going to do. Stephen A is right. They won't admit it. They can't admit it. You see, Deion Sanders right now is making a lot of people a lot of money. The community, the school, television networks, etc. There's a lot of money being made off of the Colorado Buffaloes and what Deion Sanders is doing. This weekend's game against Oregon Ducks is probably going to be a ratings buster once again and set viewership records for college football. And next weekend's game against USC? I'm going to go ahead and predict that right now. It is going to be a ratings bonanza. I predict that it will be the highest viewed 
college football game in history, except for maybe a national championship game. And I don't usually make predictions, but I think that's a slam dunk. So to answer the question I originally asked, can Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes actually beat the Oregon Ducks? I'm just gonna tell you, why not? The only thing that I think can impede the Colorado Buffaloes and possibly stop them from winning the game against Oregon Ducks is lackluster play in the first half. They are gonna have to come out and play four quarters of football. Last couple games, it seems like they took the first half off and then rallied and came back. That ain't gonna work against Oregon. You're gonna have to put four quarters of strong football together to beat a team like Oregon. But we'll see. If they can compete for all four quarters, why not? I don't see there's any reason why they can't beat the Oregon Ducks. Let me know what you think. I'll be broadcasting the game live with my watch party on Saturday afternoon. To join me, all you've got to do is click the button right here and be notified as soon as I flip the switch and go live. Talk to you soon.